In this video, we're going to continue learning how to construct character tables by focusing on construction of the linear and rotational vectors for a group. As with previous videos, we'll be focusing on the C3V point group. In previous videos, we learned how to group the six different symmetry operations of the C3V point group into classes, and then how to construct irreducible representations for the C3V point group. In this video, we're going to learn how to construct the linear and rotational vectors and assign them to their respective irreducible representations. If you'll recall, the linear vectors are aligned along the z, the x, and the y-axis of a Cartesian axis system. The vectors are defined as such, with the z vector having zero magnitude in the x and the y direction, but some magnitude along the z direction the x vector having some magnitude along the x direction, but zero magnitude in the y and the z direction, and the y vector having some magnitude in the y direction, but no magnitude in the x and the z direction. What we're interested in is how the various symmetry operations transform those vectors into new vectors. Now, if you'll recall, one of the consequences of the great orthogonality theorem is that any member of the class has the same character as all the other members for the class for a given representation of the group. Therefore, we only need to look at one symmetry operation per class. The three symmetry operations that we're going to be working with, depicted as three by three matrices, are the E symmetry operation, the C3, and the, one of the sigma v's, the sigma v1, that's along the xz plane. We're going to use these three different symmetry operations to form representations for the x, y, and z vectors, because we have all the information that we require to form those representations from these three symmetry operations represented as three by three matrices. We're going to do this in two different ways. One is by generating a reducible representation for the x, y, and z vectors combined, and then reducing that representation into irreducible representations. The second way that we're going to do this is by block diagonalization of the 3x3 three three symmetry operation matrices shown above. So starting with the first method, generating a, irre a reducible representation of the x, y, z vectors, we're going to start by generating characters using these three matrices. Remember, a character is just the trace of a square matrix. So we can take the trace of these square matrices and derive a reducible representation that has a character for E of 3, a character of C3 of 0, and a character of sigma V of 1. We're now going to use this formula to guide us through to reduce this reducible representation into its irreducible components. Defining all these terms, h is the order of the group, so h equals 6. There are six symmetry elements in the C3V point group. ni is the number of times that an irreducible representation appears in the reducible representation. chi r corresponds to the characters from the reducible representation. Chi i corresponds to the character from the irreducible representation of the group. And gc corresponds to the number of elements that are contained in that class. So what we're going to do for every single class is multiply through the number of times that that element appears in that class, the character from the irreducible representation, and then the character from the reducible representation. We're going to sum all those together and divide by h, and that will give us the number of times that that particular irreducible representation appears in the reducible representation. As long as the reducible representation is a valid representation of the group and you don't make any arithmetic errors, you'll either come up with a value of n equaling 0, meaning that that particular irreducible representation isn't contained in the reducible representation, or a positive whole number value telling you how many times that irreducible representation is contained in your reducible representation. It's easiest to make a table like I've outlined below. We're going to expand this table by carrying through the number of elements in each class into that table as such. 
And now we're going to go through and do the A1 representation by taking the characters from the reducible representation, carrying out the arithmetic. We get a sum of 6. 6 divided by the order of the group is 1. So this means that that A1 irreducible representation appears once in our reducible representation. Going through and doing this for the A2 irreducible representation, we can enter these in, carry out the arithmetic, we come up with a sum of 0. So that means that the A2 irreducible representation is not contained in the reducible XYZ representation. Finally, for the E representation, entering those in, carrying out the arithmetic, we get a sum of 6. 6 divided by 1 equals 1, meaning that that E representation is contained in that reducible representation once as well. So the reducible representation for the XYZ vectors is comprised of the A1 and the E irreducible representation. One thing to point out is that the overall dimensionality of the reducible representation equals the sum of the dimensionalities of the irreducible representations that make that up. So here, the irreducible representations are A1, a one-dimensional representation, and the E, a two-dimensional representation. One plus two equals three. That corresponds to the three-dimensional reducible representation of the XYZ vectors combined together. It turns out that that A1 representation is how the Z vector transforms and the E representation are how the XY vectors transform as a pair. It's a little bit easier to see why X and Y have to transform together if we go through and we block diagonalize these matrices and determine the representations for these vectors through a block diagonalization method. So going through and rewriting this, we're going to block diagonalize these matrices. And these matrices have to be block diagonalized in the same way. We're going to start with the C3 matrix, which we block diagonalize as such. So we have a 2 by 2 matrix corresponding to the X and the Y components, and we isolate out the Z component because there's zeros on the off diagonals. If we look and see how the E and the sigma V block diagonalize, we get this. We can extract out the characters for the Z vector right away as such. The 2 by 2 matrices we have, we now need to take the trace of those matrices. We do that, and we get the characters for those operations for the x and the y vectors. These form representations of the C3V point group. They're irreducible representations. The representation for the z vector is A1, and the representation for the xy vectors combined as a pair is the E representation. And the two-dimensionality of that E representation can be easily seen in the various matrix representations of those symmetry operations. Now this brings up something important. For the x and y vectors, for that 2 by 2 matrix, we have these non-zero off diagonal elements. This means that when you do these operations, you're going to get a mixture of x and y as you do that operation. This is a way of telling you that under C3V symmetry, the X and the Y elements are inherently linked together and cannot be considered separately. Because they're inherently linked and can't be considered separately, they have to be considered as the pair. In the character table, we present those with parentheses around them. Because the x and the y vectors are inherently linked together, it shouldn't be surprising that as we go through and look at the rotational vectors that we're going to find that the rx and the ry vectors are also inherently linked together. The mathematical depiction of a rotational vector is a little bit more complicated than a linear vector, so we're just going to do this pictorially and see what happens as we do the C3 and the sigma V rotation to the Rx, the Ry, and the Rz vector. So going through and doing the C3 rotation, we get this as a result. As you can see, the Rz vector remains unchanged. It's still aligned along the Z axis, and it's still rotating in a counterclockwise direction. 
However, the Rx and the Ry vectors no longer have pure rotations around the X and the Y axes. Both have both X and Y components to them. In the case of the Rx vector, it's acquired some clockwise rotation in an X direction and some counterclockwise rotation in a Y direction. While for the Ry vector, it's acquired some clockwise rotation in both the X and the Y direction. We're going to use that information to construct a character for the C3 operation for the RZ and then the Rx and Ry uh, pair. Doing the sigma rotation, what we find is that the RZ vector goes from a counterclockwise to a clockwise rotation. The Rx goes from a counterclockwise to a clockwise rotation, but the Ry remains in a counterclockwise rotation. As with the linear vectors, we can treat Z apart from X and Y, but we have to consider X and Y together as a pair. So Z has the following characters for its irreducible representation. So a 1, 1, negative 1. That corresponds to the A2 representation of the group. So the RZ it transforms as A2. For the RX and the RY, once again, we have two by two matrices that we're required to take the trace of to get the characters. And we come up with the E character being two, the C3 character being negative one, and the sigma character being zero. So that forms a representation of the group. It's the E irreducible representation. So just like the X and the Y vector transformed as an E representation, the RX and the RY transform as a representation, the E representation of the group. In the final video in this series of constructing character tables, we're going to tackle the last column where we're going to form the binary products of the C3V point group.